Hello everybody, and welcome to another Honkai Star Rail video. It's been a few days. I've been going pretty slow. Uh, my life is still consumed by Power World at the moment, but I realize that I gotta get this out if I'm ever gonna get this out, alright? I am very excited for everything that's coming in 2.0, um, but I just basically wanted to uh, react to this video to allow Mr. Gotcha Gamer here uh, who puts it very well, condenses it in a nice eight and a half minute video to kind of keep myself on track and see what his thoughts are on uh, the on the new patch. Uh, this is very exciting. I'm very excited for it to come out. Um, even though, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm just very excited for it to come out. It's really all I have to say. Let's get into this video. It's official, Penacony is finally the next destination in Honkai Star Rail, and these are the top 5 new features coming with the 2.0 version. So we finally got to take a first look at Penacony, and let me tell you, it feels quite a departure from the other worlds. So in a nutshell, the Express crew will receive an invitation from this mysterious faction called The Family. And when you arrive at Penacony, you're going to enter this massive hotel. Penacony looks so good. Penacony looks so good, guys. ...device called Dream Pool to enter the Dreamscape. And in these dreams, you will encounter all sorts of wacky things. The first Dreamscape called Golden Hour features this Jazz Age environment. You can see a bunch of old-timey shops, casinos, and so on, and one of the few things that stand out would be this very popular drink called Soul Glad, which finally answers the question why this uh, liquid was appearing in fountains. It's the soda. There's also this companion Clocky, who is a famous cartoon IP in Penacony, and one of the cool things about it is that the more progress you make in this new world, the more upgrades you can perform onto its statue to gain rewards. I really just love the whole design of this area. It definitely doesn't it definitely looks like nothing that we currently have in the game, which looks great. Like, look at the design of the chest in the back. It's very fancy. Like, it has a little, like, uh, ethereal key floating above it, too. Uh, and it's glowing, and obviously it's red and black. It, it looks really cool with some yellow in there. It looks really cool. This whole world, just in general, looks really cool compared to what we currently have in the game, which also looks really good, but just in a different way. I think there are some, there are a decent amount of places in uh, the Zhuolufo, uh the Zhuolufo, Laofu, that one, uh, that look really good. And Bellabog also has some places that look really good and iconic. Uh, and all of them are very distinguishable from each other. Um, and everything looks great. And this game is continuing to not uh, disappoint me in terms of. Uh, like how good everything just really looks uh anyway about this whole dream state i'm kind of hoping that this is going to be like a permanent kind of i actually don't know if i want it to be a permanent mode but i don't know what they're going to use it for is it a permanent area is it a permanent mode are we keeping this is it like the bellabog museum but like we don't really use it afterwards uh after we use it for the story i'm not sure um I didn't actually watch this whole, uh, I know they did a whole thing with like the owner of the company or something, the CEO of Hoyaverse. Uh, I did see that, but I didn't actually watch the live stream. To make in this new world, the more upgrades you can perform onto its statue to gain rewards. Now, the biggest thing about this new world is gravity. So maybe it's just like, that's like, this world is where the, or that dream state. Is kind of where the big event is happening. Like every patch has a big event, like the Bellabog Museum, and we had the, uh, the Huo Ho ghost hunting, and now there's this maybe, um, things like that. Just uh, some of the really big events that happen every like one or two patches. Rotational exploration. Basically, you'll be able to walk on walls and explore the maps not just from the ground level. You'll need to pick up these special charges to activate the gravitational walk, and in addition, two of the revealed puzzle types will be this optical illusion where you will need to navigate it to. At some point, I really need to redo my puzzle tier list only to add some of the new ones that they've added. Reach the end of the path, and then there's also this jigsaw puzzle assembly that can reveal new locations, items, and NPCs. And when it comes to new enemies, there's plenty of them. First, we have these soul glad powered robots called Dream Jolt Troop. They look pretty cool, and I love the soda drink moves they're using. But 
But uh, then we have this lordly trash can who doesn't have HP and I believe you need to cause enough weakness break to defeat it. Or you can also talk to them and then possibly avoid conflict at all. Then there's this weird Mr. Dome screen. So that's pretty based. Between faces, and depending on which one it has, the, the enemies, even if some of them or even if most of them are reskins, even if most or some of the enemies are reskins, the new ones, they look really really good still their theming is really nice Enemy type. There's a I, I don't mind it i don't know one is called don't know. something onto death when you now this looks so badass it, it honestly looks like when i first saw this thing i thought that they added some like added more content onto uh sim world swarm i could definitely see this coming to there depending on like if this is actually a part of like the swarm race enough damage to it and open its red eyes it will deal fatal damage to some of your party members and then put them into this condition where you need to save them by breaking them out pretty interesting mechanic kind of feels like a scarier mr swatog and finally for a cool boss fight we will go up against sam the last member of this guy is Hunters. so and badass help to greatly increase combat capability. this guy is so badass please make this a character in the game I thought that this was going to be a character in the game. But now that he's an enemy, I'm kind of sussed out. But we still have enemies that are characters in the game. Like we have Yan Cheng, who's in World 8. It's in World 8. Obviously, he's a character in the game. We have the fight where Kulia summons Bronya. Bronya's a character in the game, right? Um, Jepard is, a, is an enemy in, some more, in one of the SimWorld, SimWorld 3 maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah, and he's a character in the game. Sfarog's basically a character in the form of uh, Clara. Um, yeah, I just really hope Sam, uh, is released as an actual character. Maybe we fight him in like the 2.0, the first patch of, uh, this place, Penicone, and then in like the last patch of Penicone, uh, we finally get him as a character, like he teams up with us. Set the battlefield on fire, which to me sounds pretty cool. Now, when it comes to new Trailblaze missions, they Pro. Black Swan's so fucking hot, it's crazy. It's crazy. Like, let, let's just be real. On top of that, companion missions for both Sparkle and Black Swan will also be available. Overall, there's a ton of new content coming with this. Let's go. What? Some kind of sticker pass. I'm sure Fluff forgets Huh? Will also be available. Overall, there's a ton of new content. Oh, that's pretty cool. I feel like it has to get rewards of some sort or have some kind of use Content coming with this new world. And having like maybe some people can see it on your profile not that many people would care but also gain an ability to affect certain NPC emotions and so on Wait, what that's funny as fuck it will also gain an ability to affect certain NPC emotions and so on I was looking at her face it's just not changing even though her emotion is changing. It's really weird. Like, what would be even the use for that? I guess. So when it comes to new events, there's quite a few of them. For example, in Hanu's Prison Break, the Evil Warden has banned. So oh, look at that! There's another type of a. Uh... There's quite a. That was another puzzle. This is another puzzle that I don't think we have. Okay, we have a different looking version of this in um, towards the end of Jaw Lafo or Zanjo. Laofu. God, I can't say it. I, I, I can't say that shit. Prison break. The evil warden has banned Soul Glad drink, and you need to break out your cellmates from the prison. How does this work? Well, there's a bunch of pathing mini games, and it will also be able to turn into this cute chibi character Hanu to solve puzzles. And for Jesus. all this effort, you'll get to choose between one of these four star characters. If my Asta isn't six star, I feel like that's the most obvious answer of all time. Other than that, next up after that is Wu uh, Yukong. If she if she is E6, which I guarantee that she isn't on my account, I really don't think she is. It's Gwenfin and then Gwenfin and then uh, Sampa after that. Characters and claim them, and I'm still missing a couple of idolons for Yukong, so this will be perfect for me. Another event called Dream Chase Bulletin. In here, you'll be forced. Guys, I don't know what is wrong with this guy's subtitles. Like they're blurred out for no reason. Like, it's not me. Yeah, it's not me, guys. Um,
Yeah, I don't know. Just read a newsletter, and from it, you will need to do a bunch of exploration missions. So basically just a neat way to introduce you to a new world for extra rewards. There's also a new battle event called Dream Joel TV that features this really funny chef T-Rex. The enemies... See, that's badass. I mean, that's, that's just badass. Look at that team, by the way. That's the Kafka Black Swan... Uh... Luke, Luca team. That's crazy. Mutations, and you'll be able to gain more points the better your team performs in these fights. But wait, whoa, 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 what did I do? Puzzles, Oops. There's also going to be a food fest event. Let's go. Various dishes by what looks like just submitting basic materials. And in return, we can unlock a bunch of new food recipes along with some other usual rewards. Now for some serious stuff. The light cones shop for both Pure Fiction and Forgotten Hall will get updated. So I'm very curious Let's go. what these new light cones will be when I test them. Finally, for some easy... I'm sure some of those are probably going to be pretty decent, but I'm just glad that they're adding some newer ones. I feel like almost everybody has um, max uh, superimposed the ones that they actually wanted. Free stuff, just like with previous... It's like, let's be honest, there is a meta. There are good ones and there are bad ones. That's like with light cones, it's kind of just like a fact in that way. Or it's like, you can pull a character because you like them, because you're actively seeing the characters in battle every time, but you're not pulling a light cone if it's bad. Like, let's be honest, you're not going to purposely pull it just because like it has like a cute picture or something like that. There is a meta for it, and most of the good ones have definitely been bought and fully superimposed by people who are at least actively playing the game. Um, also, a black swan is hot. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that. Updates. All you have to do is just log in and claim 10 free pulls. But what's even better, there's another check-in event. Where Let's go. More free pulls. So, 20 pulls total. 20 pulls. 20 pulls for free for playing the game. Back to back with the same patch that added a doctor ratio and gave it him to us for free. Crazy, man. I want to say Genshin could never. So I will. Genshin could never. But, wow. I'm not sure about you, but some of these 2.0 characters look pretty Oh my god. Guys. First of all, we've got Black Swan. Oh my a five god. Nihility unit, and she has this unique mechanic where she can stack a special arcana debuff on enemies with her attacks, which is a special damage over time status. And the more stacks of arcana she builds on enemies, oh my the god. more over time they will take. Pretty interesting to see that the death Bro. of the share is not cool enough and went with a unique DOT status. And speaking of unique, the next character Sparkle is a f A part of me wants to drop my fush my my Luocha. No, no. A part of me wants to drop my um I just looked at a message and then it like threw me off. Um a part of me wants to drop my Jing Yuan like a rock. And just pull for Kafka on a rerun with Fushuan. Uh, oh, not with Fushuan. Uh, and Black Swan. Like, is that the hottest team in the game? A hundred percent. Like, Kafka. Kafka, Black Swan. Honestly, I don't know who would be your Harmony character. I don't know who would be. Well, no, I know who would be your Harmony character. It would be uh, Ruan May. And then for like the healer, it could be anybody. I mean, like, you know, Loach is a pretty good looking dude. You know? Status. And speaking of Adventuring looks really good. Looks looks really good looking. Unique. So. The next character Spark. But I think I'm gonna pull for Sparkle. It's cause she's in that it's sane. It depends though. It depends. It depends. Because I do have a Bronia already, guys. She has to be much 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 better than Bronya. okay for me to say pulling on this because the thing is i have an e1 Bronya, right and i feel like i'm just kind of throwing it down the drain if i get sparkle because if i get sparkle why am i and i have ruan may which i do why am i ever going to use Bronya again unless moc comes out with a form of like making three teams for it it's almost like my Ting Yun has been kind of left in the dust for a while now, and it is upsetting to a point, right? 
Sparkle is it's kind of upsetting quantum in some ways. Unit. And when she's in the team, the amount of maximum skill points will be increased. And from the looks of it here, it's increasing from 5 to 7. This is already insane to me. But what's even crazier is that her ultimate will restore skill points for the team. And anyone who uses skill points to deal damage will deal better damage. If that's not enough, her skill can advance forward turns for teammates. So, all in all, at least on paper, she sounds too good to be true. It really does, and I act I actually use QQ as my main quantum damage dealer. She will be an absolute freakazoid. Freakazoid. Um Yeah. I think a part of me just like Because a part of me wants to pull for Don Hung and Bibiter Lune. Because I think he'll be really badass and fun as fuck to use with Sparkle, the combo with Sparkle. But then also a part of me is like, okay, do I really need another imaginary damage dealer? I have Dr. Ratio, he's one of the best characters in the game, the best hunt character in the game, right? He's imaginary. I have a Welt that I still haven't finished building, even though he's not a main DPS, he still deals a pretty decent amount of damage and he can be built that way um it's like it's just re but like don hung il just really 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 works like it just really works with sparkle i just really want sparkle that's a decision i'm gonna have to make when i get there i'm pretty sure don hung il is gonna be the rerun banner with sparkle and uh Kafka is going to be the rerun banner with Black Swan. And I'm just saying, guys, the devs know what they're doing, okay, with that. The devs know their game, okay? They know the synergies. That's literally the best synergy. That's the best synergy character with Black Swan. That's the best synergy character with uh, Sparkle. Rerunning on their, you know, during those respective characters' banners. But if you saved up a ton of pulls, and you're going for them both, you can just get them both. True. And I'm very curious to see how good she turns out to be. But just the fact you can break the skill point cap is already a must pull for me. Finally, there's also a new 4-star Misha, who is an ice destruction unit, and basically he seems to prefer Sparkle's company because his abilities and ultimate will be better the more skill points the team has. On top of that, he has a pretty cool technique where you can stop time in an area. Now, when it comes to That's the really banners, cool. in Phase 1, Black Swan and Imbibitor Lune along with Misha... It's actually funny. Yep, there we go. I'm fucking right. I'm always right. Um... I mean, I kind of knew it. I was just remembering, but you know what I'm saying. It's kind of crazy. It's actually kind of funny that he, um, Misha is, well, he's a destruction ice unit, just like Jing Liu, but a four star. And his thing is stop time in a zone, in an area, and hers is freeze things around her. So his is like, in a way, a worse version of hers, who's just always freezing things when you get around them. And he's like, well, I'm going to freeze time in this area. Um, so I'm going to freeze them in that area. Uh, I think that's pretty funny in a way. Um, I do kind of like the fact that he just off the bat on the banner with Sparkle synergizes really, really well with her. I think that that is so cool. I wish that they, they I, I, I wish they did that every time. Pass. On top of that, he has a pretty cool technique where you can stop time. I just really, I love this patch. I love all the synergies we're getting, even though I'm not a Kafka enjoyer. Like, the fact that Black Swan is so badass, is so, let's be honest, hot as fuck, and I want to pull for her, really makes me want to get Kafka, right? I have to get Kafka if, I, if I'm going to get Black Swan. Because honestly... That's kind of the character where it's like you might as well not play like with a Luca or a Sampo or if unless you have Kafka. And now it's like you might as well not play Kafka unless you have a Black Swan and vice versa. Right. It's kind of my it's kind of like the feeling, the vibe, the the truth, to be honest. Um and Sparkle is just gonna be better Bronya, probably overall just better Bronya. So I feel like there's way more use there, but it's 
Sparkle is really making me want to pull Don Hung, Don Hung IL because the synergies are so just obvious and insanely good uh, that like, yeah, getting these, getting either of these new characters, these new five stars mean that I basically am feeling a pull from deep within to get yet another new five star. My account can hardly take this stuff, man. I'm in an area. Now, when it comes to the new banners, in Phase 1, Black Swan and Imbibitor Lunae along with Misha will be on the featured banners, which also includes their signature light cones, while Phase 2 will have Sparkle and Jingyuan banners along with their... Oh, wait, what? Wait, there's no Kafka rerun? Wait, is the Kafka rerun right now? <laughs> this is what I was going to do. I was going to do a thing, but then I remembered this is happening. Uh, is the Kafka rerun happening right now? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. Guys, get your Kafka then. Get your Kafka. What are you doing? I'm about to get my Kafka right now. Yeah, part of me actually died inside whenever I, I thought that I might get that. Um, like, if like, there's a possibility. Like, if I did, though, so badass. But, like, uh, then I'd, if I pulled Kafka there, I'd have to go for Black Swan. I'd have to go for Black Swan. We do have two pulls. We do have two extra pulls. Should we do it? If if I get it, it's meant to be. It's just so hard to do because, bro, I don't have the build for this. I have to go for Black Swan. I'd probably have to skip out on Sparkle. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it, guys. I got. I shouldn't have all tapped. I should have all tapped. Yeah. Okay. So so Kafka's happening right now. So anybody who heard me before thinks I'm just yapping, 100%, because I am. Uh, whenever I said Kafka's on the banner with, uh, uh, Kafka's rerunning with Black Swan. No, Kafka's happening right now. And then Don Hung IL comes when Black Swan is up. You can pull for him if you're going to go for Sparkle afterwards. And then Jing Yuan is going to, who kind of has no synergy with either of them, really, in my opinion. Um, other than just the fact that Sparkle can buff him well. Um... Now, when yeah. it comes to the new I think what's actually going to be crazy is I might go for Acheron because Acheron is going to be the same five star lightning nihility just like Kafka exactly like Kafka but she is going to be a more overall really good nihility and the only nihilities I have that I would consider like pretty good that I actually use actively um are Kafka and Welt if I you know if I finally get off my ass and build them but like yeah wait did i say kafka i meant pela and wealth if i finally get off my ass and build them and pela is really good specifically for ice characters because she adds you know the ice uh defense weakness or whatever it is um but obviously she works really well with my jing liu but I don't really have an ability character that debuffs them like really well for my other characters, if we're being honest. I'm just not good enough to use, I think. Except for Welt, and he's more like a time zone keeper. Like I want a an ability character that's gonna debuff the shit out of them. So maybe Akron is actually something that I pull. Even though I didn't talk very highly of her um in the video where I, you know, talked about how she's coming to the game. New banners in phase one, Black Swan and Imbibitor Lunae along with Misha will be on the featured banners, which also includes their signature light cones. While phase two will have Sparkle and Jing Yuan banners along with their signature light. Sparkle's light cone is crazy broken. Why this time during the live stream, the remaining featured four stars haven't been revealed, but maybe they'll do this on social media later on. Okay, so I hope you've been saving up that fuel because 2.0 also introduces a couple of new relic sets. The first one called Pioneer Diver of Dead Waters will enhance damage of the equipped character when they attack a debuffed enemy. I mean, this basically sounds like a set for Dr. Ratio, and I'm glad I haven't had the time to farm for his dedicated relic set. Now, the other one is called... That's true. I think both of these, by the way, are really decent sets. Um, uh, maybe not so much the second one. It's just a better version of Thieves. Um, but I'm probably going to farm these because I haven't farmed a relic set for Dr. Ratio. And I might as well just wait. 
I might as well just wait a week or two for this patch to come out and then just get like the best in slot one. I like might as well. Like why not? I'm actually gonna play with my doctor ratio. 100% just do this. Watchmaker, master of dream machinations. And the only small tidbit of info that was revealed about it is that it will increase break effect for the whole team. So to me, this sounds like a support set, but I'll need to see the actual numbers and effects before deciding how good it is. Now, this is probably my favorite part of the video. We get to see what quality of life changes have been made for Star Rail. Yes. It, like, am I like the only one? Like, I'm not the only one. I'm so happy, but by the way. Um, I actually love QOL changes more than anything, right? Like, you can have new content, and as long as, like, you have some QOL changes, that's what makes me fall in love. Because I think QOL is, like, the, is like the spice of life in any game, in any game. The, any way the devs can find to make every task as little annoyance or strife as possible the the smoother the devs can make every little individual experience in the game feel the better a game is like straight up straight up and well i'm not gonna lie these changes are pretty huge. like this is cool First, we have this face this is actually really cool where it basically gives a visual overview of the whole story and plot moments and this heavily reminds me of those rpg games where they have dense political lore so that's crazy it shows like side quests companion quests and main quests it has like a tree or like a almost like a, a timeline of where you are in the story and like what quests are coming up and what quests you can like go out and get and what you've already completed. I think that just that's just really cool. You can always get back to a system like this and explore key moments. I'm guessing this will be a pretty nifty feature for lore content creators. Anyway, another big change yeah. has to do with the support system. Now, instead of 3, you can add 5 more characters to That's amazing. It's amazing you can have 3 different support characters that people can use. And then five different characters just to show on your profile your support roster and instead of three characters show on your profile. Means even better passive income and even some improvements have been made to the filtering and sorting system when you want to use someone's support character now funnily enough genshin was the first one to get these changes for the artifacts but now in star rail you can also auto enhance relics to a designated breakpoint of a level which provides a new substat in addition the sorting and filtering system for relics is also receiving some improvements so i hope this means you can save a bit of time in picking out relics for character builds finally there's also the relic recommendation such as makes relic farming faster well i mean what it he just he's just blasting through this stuff by the way that means that you can have more support characters right so each profile each person can have three support characters that people can actually use in their combats that's awesome for me personally because my friend uh, matrana is just getting back into the game and what if it's not a wind thing that he's doing well he can also borrow my jing liu and he can also borrow my uh i don't know my i don't know he already has Jing Yuan, so like, I don't know another DPS I have. Um, yeah, that's this is awesome. Um, and then yeah, the, the sorting, the filters. Yeah, you can you can go up to the next breakpoint for a substat upgrade, uh, and then auto add, and then there you go. Sorting and filtering system designated breakpoint of a level which provides a new substat. Yeah. In addition, the sorting and filtering system for relics is also receiving some improvements. So I hope this means. And then you get to sort by set. That goes crazy. Of time and picking out relics for character builds. Finally, there's also the relic. Rec this is nuts. By the way, this is nuts. I saw this in a flash. Added, which seems pretty similar to what Gen Like I, I saw this whenever I was um skimming through some stuff this is nuts the fact that in the actual game itself it will scan the entire player base and say what are people using on this character what are most people using that's like good and it'll just show you the most meta way to build your characters you click on the thing you click on the recommended set right like two piece of 
the healing set, two piece of the the musketeer set, right? Like it has there. And then it will only show you musketeer it will only show you pieces from those sets just by clicking on it and it basically auto filters your entire set of like your entire gear thing. That is insane. That is crazy quality of life. I'm so surprised people haven't talked about that more. That is insane to me. Insane to me. It is so crazy good. All you need to do is just click between the top three recommended sets, and they immediately filter out the set pieces you can check out. And right? From what I understand, these recommended sets will be based on the data of active players. And oh my the god. And mentioned is how they're going to upgrade Whoops. the process of salvaging the relics. So all in all, seems like Honkai Star Rail team just added a ton of quality of life changes to the relic system, and I could not be happier about this. But yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to the new 2.0 update. I'm it will never be questioned, how do you do a gear cleanse? Never. Never. Never, because everybody will just automatically know what is good on their characters, and then they will just know to salvage everything else, and it'll be easier to salvage, and it'll be easier to sort through your gear. Like, you really only need to know the absolute bare minimum basics to gear cleanse, and then other than that, it's just like, what the recommended tab says that everyone is building, like most people are building on your character. And I would assume that's like in a game like Honkai Sorrow, where you don't need the absolute best in slot, most off meta wacky shit, right? Um, and go crazy. And I'm in a world where like that we're and this is the world we're living in, by the way. This is real life. Um you don't need to have the craziest, most highest percentage, no matter the pick rate or play rate build ever, right? You just need to have a functioning build, and it'll just basically show you the most functioning build that most people are using. That is crazy. That is crazy. That's awesome. Everybody, uh, sorry I turned this 8-minute video into a 32-minute banger. That's what I usually do with my reacts. Thank you to Gotcha Gamer for making this video to condense it down so that I could basically uh, uh, pal world your Pokemon here in terms of uh, this video uh, because I could have made a video like this where I just basically condensed all the things myself and talked about it but like why would I do that when you, ever, you could talk about it and then like I could talk about it with you you know what well, hey I'm a genius um yeah everyone go subscribe to Gotcha Gamer boom subscribe boom like and that's exactly what you guys should do to this video and the video that I'm watching right now. I'm going to be linking this video in the in uh, the description below. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day. Peace.